Good afternoon, everyone. On behalf of the Chairman and Trustees of the Thistle Trust, may I welcome you once again to the Robin Chapel here in Edinburgh for our afternoon service. Today is the 10th Sunday in the season of Trinity. I'm Dr Ian Barclay, the Chaplain. I would also like to welcome the Reverend Mary Whitaker of St John's Church for Deaf People in Aberdeen. Mary is our guest preacher today. She is joined by her sister Anne Falks, who will share with her in parts of the service. Our guest reader today is Kay Cool, a member of the Kirk Session of Balerno Parish Church. To you all, it is wonderful to have you sharing with us in our service today. Please accept our thanks and our appreciation for your support of the ministry of the Robin Chapel. To those who are joining us for the first time at worship, may I offer a most sincere welcome to you. To those who are with us Sunday by Sunday, may I welcome you once more. The format of our service today closely approximates to what you would experience in the chapel on the second Sunday of the month, once we reopen. In our worship, we are again ably supported by the voices of James Slimmings, our Director of Music, Sally Carr, one of our lay clerks, and Callum Robertson, our Assistant Organist, who come together as the Robin Chapel Music Group. Next Sunday is the 11th Sunday after Trinity. The reader on that occasion will be Geoffrey McSkimming, a member of my congregation when I was minister of the Scots Church in Sydney. Geoffrey is a children's author whose characters include Cairo Jim and Phyllis Wong. Dare I say it, if you're looking for a book for your children or grandchildren for Christmas, the new Cairo Jim novel, Cairo Jim and the Portal of Peristophanes, The Return of Cairo Jim, will appear in November 2021. But I'm glad to say, Geoffrey will be with us before that. Our bidding psalm today is Psalm 34. I will always bless the Lord. You can find this as the hymn number 27 in Church Hymnary, 4th edition. Let us now offer our prayers. Let us pray. Let us approach God in humility and faith. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts 
by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us confess our sins in penitence and faith. Merciful God, you have made us in your image with a mind to know you, a heart to love you, and a will to serve you. But our knowledge is imperfect, our love inconstant, and our obedience incomplete. Day by day we fail to grow into your likeness, yet you are slow to be angry with your children. For the sake of Jesus Christ, your Son, our Saviour, do not hold our sins against us, but in your tender love forgive us. Amen. Lord, have mercy upon us. Christ, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. Let us receive his forgiveness in faith. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon us, pardon and deliver us from all our sins, confirm and strengthen us in all goodness, and keep us in life eternal through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Let us understand our place in his grace. Lord God, almighty and gracious, who has called us to be holy as you are holy, grant us power to walk worthy of our high calling in Jesus Christ. Strengthen us against temptation, teach us to do your will, cause us to abound more and more in faith and love, in holy desires and kind and brotherly affections, in pure and peaceable dispositions, and in patient and humble service, that the name of the Lord Jesus Christ may be glorified in us. God of peace, sanctify us wholly until we stand perfect and complete in your presence. And to you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, be all glory and praise, world without end. Amen. And we conclude in the Collect for the Day. Lord of heaven and earth, as Jesus taught his disciples to be persistent in prayer, give us patience and courage, never to lose hope, but always to bring our prayers before you, through Jesus Christ, our Lord, in whose name we offer these and all our prayers. Amen. Our guest preacher, the Reverend Mary Whittaker, will read the Old Testament lesson from the second book of Samuel, and our guest reader, Kay Cool, will read from Paul's epistle to the Ephesians, and from the Gospel according to John. The Old Testament lesson is from the second book of Samuel, chapter 18, verses 5 to 9, 15, and 31 to 33. Hear the word of God. The king commanded Joab, Abishai, and Etai, Be gentle with the young man Absalom, for my sake. And all the troops 
heard the king giving orders concerning Absalom to each of the commanders. David's army marched out of the city to fight Israel and the battle took place in the forest of Ephraim. There Israel's troops were routed by David's men and the casualties that day were great. 20,000 men. The battle spread out over the whole countryside and then the forest swallowed up more men that day than the sword. Now, Absalom happened to meet David's men. He was riding his mule, and as the mule went under the thick branches of a large oak, Absalom's hair got caught in the tree. He was left hanging in mid-air, while the mule he was riding kept on going. And ten of Joab's armour-bearers surrounded Absalom, struck him, and killed him. Then the Cushite arrived and said, My lord, the king, hear the good news. The lord has vindicated you today by delivering you from the hand of all who rose up against you. The king asked the Cushite, is the young man Absalom safe? The Cushite replied, May the enemies of my lord the king and all who rise up to harm you be like that young man. The king was shaken. He went up to the room over the gateway and wept. As he went, he said, O oh, my son, Absalom, my son, my son, Absalom, if only I had died instead of you. O oh, Absalom, my son, my son. The Robin Chapel Music Group <laughs> will now sing Psalm 130. Out of the depths have I cried to you, O Lord. Out of the deep have I called unto thee, O Lord. Lord, Consider well the voice of my complaint. If thou, Lord, would be extreme to mark what is done amiss, O Lord, who may abide it, for there is mercy with thee, therefore shalt thou be free. Glory be to the 
chapter 4, verses 25 to chapter 5, verse 2. Therefore, each of you must put off falsehood and speak truthfully to your neighbour, for we are all members of one body. In your anger, do not sin. Do not let the sun go down while you are still angry, and do not give the devil a foothold. Anyone who has been stealing must steal no longer, but must work doing something useful with their own hands, that they may have something to share with those in need. Do not let any unwholesome talk come out of your mouths, but only what is helpful for building others up according to their needs, that it may benefit those who listen. And do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God with whom you are sealed for the day of redemption. Get rid of all bitterness, rage and anger, brawling and slander, along with every form of malice. Be kind and compassionate to one another, forgiving each other, just as in Christ God forgave you. Follow God's example, therefore, as dearly loved children, and walk in the way of love, just as Christ loved us and gave himself up for us as a fragrant offering and sacrifice to God. Amen, and thanks be to God. The Robin Chapel Music Group will now sing our first canticle, Jubilate Deo, to a setting by William Walton.
the day is to be found in that according to John, chapter 6, verses 35 and 41 to 51. This is the Gospel of Christ. Then Jesus declared, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never go hungry, and whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. And continuing at verse 41. At this the Jews there, be, there began to grumble about him because he said, I am the bread that came down from heaven. They said, Is this not Jesus, the son of Joseph, whose father and mother we know? How can he now say, I came down from heaven? Stop grumbling among yourself, Jesus answered. No one can come to me unless the father who sent me draws them, and I will raise them up at the last day. It is written in the prophets, they will be taught by God. Everyone who has heard the Father and learned from him comes to me. No one has seen the Father except the one who is from God. Only he has seen the Father. Very truly I tell you, the one who believes has eternal life. I am the bread of life. Your ancestors ate manna in the wilderness, yet they died. But here is the bread that comes down from heaven, which anyone may eat and not die. I am the living bread that came down from heaven. Whoever eats this bread will live forever. This bread is my flesh, which I will give for the life of the world. Amen and thanks be to God. Amen and thanks be to God for these readings of his holy word. To his name be the praise and glory. No.
I would now like to welcome as our guest preacher today, the Reverend Mary Whitaker. Mary will now preach using British Sign Language, and her sister Anne Falks will give the rendering in English. Mary. It does not have to be this way. Today's reading is the story of Absalom being killed and David grieving. This conclusion means nothing to us if we don't know the rest of the story, the lead up to this stage. If you've seen the film Titanic with Leonardo DiCaprio and Kate Winslet, it starts with the wreck under the ocean and then it takes the rest of the film to explain the ending. I'd encourage you to take time to read back to 2 Samuel chapter 13 through to this chapter 18. This story is worthy of a TV soap. The gist of this story is that after Absalom killed his half-brother for raping his sister, he ran off and he stayed away from his father David for three years. Eventually, David was persuaded to allow Absalom to come back to Jerusalem. However, David refused to see his own son. Two further years passed, Absalom trying to arrange a meeting with his father. And finally they met. But were they reconciled? Sadly, Absalom's frustration and anger led him to make other plans. Within four years, he'd started a rebellion, gathered his own insurgents to fight against David's army. His desire was to overthrow and kill his own father. But in the end, it was Absalom that got killed and David who grieved. It does not have to be this way. David's anguish, it's not only from the tragedy of Absalom's rebellion and death, but also out of his own failure to be an effective father. Maybe that's why David told his army commanders, be gentle with the young man, Absalom, for my sake. Perhaps he was looking for the opportunity to forgive and reconcile with his son. David's grief for Absalom, with whom he did not have a good relationship, that grief from his son's death was so much greater than over their falling out in life. He'd missed so many opportunities to seek forgiveness. What happened to Absalom and David did not have to be this way. And we can ask ourselves, what if? What if David's forgiveness of Absalom had been accepted? What if reconciliation had been tried more fully? We live in a broken world. Pain and anguish crash in on us because of what's happened in our lives and in the lives of those we love. And yet, 
we feel helpless when it comes to taking the opportunity to forgive and make amends. It may be too late for some of us. Guilt and grief can leave us so badly wounded that we can't move on. But it does not have to end this way. Yes, what's happened has happened. And we can't change that. Our mistakes are part of our life. Unfortunately for some, the past is ever present. And they can't help but refer back despite months or even years passing. Maybe they don't mean to be like this. Maybe the issue was not resolved satisfactorily. How can we move on? How can we let go of the past? The story of David and Absalom invites us to find other ways of responding to our circumstances. It invites us to seek the gift of forgiveness and reconciliation. We can seek to forgive others and to forgive ourselves, to reconcile with others and to reconcile with our own past. We can choose to focus on who we are past and all, in our relationship with God. David, flawed and broken as he was, was called a man after God's own heart. Twice, in 1 Samuel 13, verse 14, and also in Acts, chapter 13, verse 22. We too can be called children after God's own heart. David's fatherly tears and his words, if only I had died instead of you, reminds us of the compassion of God for his rebellious children, of his willingness to die for us. The image of David's son Absalom left hanging midair, that leads us to reflect on the image of God's son Jesus left hanging between heaven and earth, between life and death. David's fatherly grief showed that he couldn't help loving his rebellious son. God's fatherly grief showed that he couldn't help loving his rebellious children. Unlike Absalom's death by vengeance, Jesus' death is the gift of forgiveness and reconciliation that can restore us. Reconciliation is not forgetting the past. Forgiveness can be hard. Changing our ways is hard. Jesus invites us to become peacemakers. He never promised it would be easy. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise him all creatures he Praise Him above ye heavenly host. Praise Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Amen. 
The Robin Chapel Music Group will now lead us in the singing of our paraphrase. Paraphrase 22. Art thou afraid, his power shall fail. We shall sing it to the set tune St Stephen Abridge. It can be found in Church Hymnary 4th edition as the hymn 190. for the creed. Let us be conscious that they do so on behalf of us all. Thereafter, we shall return to our prayers.
Let us pray and thank God for his goodness. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, you have promised through your Son to hear us when we pray in faith. Strengthen your church in the service of Christ, that those who confess your name may be united in your truth, live together in your love, and reveal your glory in the world. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Bless and guide Elizabeth, our Queen, give wisdom to all in authority, and direct this and every nation in the ways of justice and of peace, that we may honour one another and seek the common good. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Give grace to us, our families and friends, to all who work and serve the Thistle Foundation and all the communities gathered here, that we may serve one another and love as he loves us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Comfort and heal all those who suffer in body, mind or spirit. Give to them courage and hope in their troubles and bring them with us to the joys of salvation. Hear us as we remember and pray for those who have died, that they may rest from their labours and be at peace with you, our Lord and our God. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. In our regimental collect, we think of those who formerly served with the Royal Scots, the Royal Regiment. O Lord Jesus Christ, who art the first and the last, grant, we pray thee, that as thou hast promised to be with us even unto the end of the world, so may those who served with the Royal Scots be the first to follow thee and the last to forsake thee, who art with the Father and the Holy Ghost, one God, world without end. Amen. Merciful Father, accept these our prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ our Lord, who taught us to pray together, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in, in heaven. In keeping with the traditions of the Give chapel us this community, day, our daily bread, we pray the prayer of King and Henry VI together. And forgive us our debts, together. and as thereafter I will our lead in the collect for the blues and, and lead boils. us not into temptation, Let us pray. but deliver us from O Lord evil. Jesus Christ, for thine is who has the kingdom, created and the redeemed power me, and the glory, and has brought me forever. hither where I am. Amen. Thou knowest what thou wouldst do with me, do with me according to thy will, with mercy. Amen. O Lord Jesus Christ, who by the Holy Apostle has called us to put on the armour of God and to take the sword of the Spirit, Give thy grace, we pray, to the blues and royals, that they may fight manfully under the banner against all evil, and waiting on thee to renew their strength, may mount up with wings as eagles 
in thy name, who livest and reignest with the Father and the Holy Ghost, ever one God, world without end. Amen. Our concluding hymn today, from Church Hymnary 4th edition, is the hymn 552, O for a Closer Walk with God, and we shall sing it to the set tune, Martyrdom. May the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit rest and abide with each one of you and with all for whom you pray in this day and always.